Good evening and welcome back to our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. Tonight we've got four faces on the stage we have not yet seen and it is our joy to welcome to the program the Bob Hallahan Quartet featuring saxophonist David Pope.
right, thank you for joining us for this concert. And uh, we'd like to thank the Richmond Jazz Society and the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts and Dominion Energy for sponsoring it. That was something from the American Popular Songbook, one of many wonderful songs written by the songwriting team of Richard Rogers and Lorenz Hart, and it's called My Romance. We're gonna continue now with a composition of mine, and this is called Boheme, as in La Boheme, the opera by Puccini. I borrow one tiny little snippet of one of his melodies, and it's uh, ensconced somewhere in the melody to this, and uh, it'll feature David Pope playing soprano saxophone on this. Bohem.
like to now play a, a song by another great songwriting team from the American Popular Songbook. This time, Arthur Schwartz and Howard Dietz. And this is their composition, their, their melody called You and the Night and the Music. We don't know if you're sharing the music with us in the evening or in the afternoon, but we'll just uh, say we're dedicating this to you and the night and the music and to Arthur and Howard while we're at it. So this is uh, our arrangement. It's got a little hint of uh, Afro-Cuban rhythm to it. You and the night and the music.
we'd like to uh, wrap up our first set with another original composition by our pianist. This is a blues, although it may not sound like it to you. It does follow the, uh, the form of the 12 bar blues, and, but with some slightly uh, unusual harmonic choices in those 12 bars. We'll eventually bring it back to something that sounds a little bit more like the blues. Not necessarily bluesy, but blues in form. So this is called, and I'm not even sure why I called it this, it's called Monkey Logic.
Y'all caught me off guard at the end of that last one. But I don't mind it. This has been a night of music, and it's going to keep going. This man's finger's about to fall off his pocket watch. I wish I ever played a horn like that. I think you've earned a break, if you'll take it. And Bob, would you like to have a conversation over here? Absolutely. All right. Well, Bob Hallahan, thank you so much for being on the program, and thank you even more for that first set of music. You're very welcome. We enjoyed it. I, as did we, and as did everyone on the other end of these lenses. Now, before we get into our conversation, would you take just a moment to tell us something about yourself in your own words? Sure. Well, I mean, I'm, I've always been involved with music from a you know, very early age. It just always seemed like the only thing was possible mm -hmm. for me to do. So I went to music school after high school. You know, and in high school, that's, that's when I got into jazz, was when I was in high school. But not on the piano. Hmm. I, I was taking piano lessons, but I got into jazz via the guitar. Oh, wow. In which I had taught myself to play. Starting with the Beatles and then graduating from there to, you know, Eric Clapton and right. Jimi Hendrix. Right. Um, who I managed to be able to see live. Hendrix? Yes. Oh, I, oh I'm jealous. Yeah, it was great. I wish I could relive it, but um, and that's all I'm going to say because I'm really going to aid, you know tell you how old I am if I say any more about it. Yeah. So yeah, and I've been very very fortunate to be able to ply my trade and make a living playing music and and living in really great places to live like Richmond and now for the last ten years or so in the Shenandoah Valley. Well, it certainly shows that the skill that must have come from some natural talent somewhere. But way back when you first made a sound, what made you start becoming a musician? After high school, you went into school, but why'd you begin? Well, you know, I started taking piano lessons because my parents thought it would be a good idea. Hmm. And I was a pretty obedient child. It wasn't like I was yearning for that right. at that point already. So I said, sure, yeah, that sounds good. and I did okay with it and I liked my teacher so that was a good experience to start out with but when I really kind of caught fire with music was when the Beatles mm -hmm. came out and I really got into their music and I wanted to figure out what was going on so we had this old guitar lying around that I picked up and started just hit and miss trying to figure <laughs> out what the chords were to their songs and things just went on from there. You're better than me. I fretted instruments in particular I just can't I just can't get it. Yeah, well, you kind of have to be willing to deal with pain at first, <laughs> you know, <laughs> to develop the calluses. So I'd, somehow I got through that phase. But um, for me, it was like I'm coming from the piano to guitar, which is what you did. Too. Yeah, it was yeah. difficult for me to imagine what I want to play is the, the subdominant fifth or something. Yeah. But I don't know where that is on a guitar, on a <laughs> keyboard. It's right yeah, there every, th that's why the piano is, is so great, you know, and why everybody in music school needs to learn some piano. Yeah. Cause, it's all right there in front of you, literally in black and white. Perhaps, oh, I like that, literally yeah. in black and white. <laughs> yeah. We talk almost every episode of this broadcast about the importance of a great educator, like yourself. Uh, when you reflect on the great educators from your past, what are some of the, the shining moments uh, of your path? Well, you know, it's funny, I was just thinking about this lately, and there's, um, I mean, there's so many, really, literally, every, every professor I ever had, every private teacher I had, but several that stand out were, were like the choral director mm. at my high school in, in Falls Church, Virginia, mm. was a really good jazz pianist. And so he was a good mentor, you know, for me as a, I got to play with him a little bit, you know, me right. playing guitar at the time. Right. Um, you know, and, and kind of set, set the right tone in that music department at my high school to, for myself and my fellow students that were also into jazz to, to grow and to be able to contribute. Right. So his name is Art Monroe and, and, um, and then two really great jazz musicians who are now, well, at least one of them is well into their 90s mm. and they're still out there doing it. A mm -hmm. wonderful singer who I perform with a number of times named Sheila Jordan. And uh, when I was here in Richmond, we brought her here several times. Um, 
at a club where I was the music director. Mm -hmm. And um, she's just the salt of the earth and um, just a great mentor and a great proponent of this music. Mm -hmm. she's, uh, she sent me a belated birthday wish from out on the road in Europe, you know, at the age of 92 wow. or so. She's touring with, you know, playing in concerts and clubs still. That is, yeah. She's amazing. What a great thing to have still have such a strong connection to her. Yeah, yeah. Even though I haven't, haven't seen her in, a, in several years. Right. But yeah, she's, she's an amazing person and a great musician. Wow. Yeah. It's making me think of um, one of probably, well, one of my greatest educators, Maestro Francisco de Arujo, is very on in age himself. But he checks in with me every now and then. Yeah. You know, he's given me, blessed me with quite a great library of music, orchestral scores, choral scores. Yeah. That educator thing to me is so precious. Right. Well, you know, what I find is, as, as a teacher myself, that eventually, you know, students become your, your musical peers. Mm -hmm. And, mm -hmm. and if, if, you st if you're around long enough, if you've been doing it long enough, or, and friends, like, for example, today, our bassist, Neil Perrine, he graduated from JMU oh, wow. oh, two, three years ago. Okay. And, uh, but even before he graduated, I felt like he was as much of, as a friend, of a friend as he was a wow. student, and now even more so. And I was happy to see him come to Richmond and be able to establish himself here as a working musician. And He's clearly well-trained. Yes, well, we, yeah, he had a good teacher at yeah. JMU. For sure. Tell me about your time teaching here in Richmond. Yeah, well, I, you know, when I moved here, it wasn't to teach specifically. I oh. moved moved here to join a band that some friends of mine, who I had been playing with in Washington, where I was living uh -huh. at the time, had ended up here, and they said we're we're kind of we're going to start a new band. Would you be interested in moving down here and and joining us? And you know. See if it works out for you. If, you doesn't, if it doesn't, you can just, it's not like you're moving across the country, right. so it would be easy to go back to D.C. And I was ready to try something new. Always thought if I left D.C., I'd be going north. Yeah, but <laughs> didn't we all? I kind of like being contrary, you know, so yeah. it's like, no, I'm going to go in the other direction. <laughs> and there was a lot of stuff going on here at that time. This was like the very end of the 70s, early okay, 80s. Okay. A lot of places to play, and so it was a great place for me to continue my musical growth. Um, so, but once I was here, um, Doug Richards at VCU, okay. um, he, he had started the program just before I moved here, the jazz program there, and eventually got me involved in just doing a little bit of teaching, you know, mm -hmm. a, a student or two, private student or two, mm -hmm. and then eventually one class, and things just kept growing from there and ended up being VCU became my main reason for sticking around in Richmond. That and the, the music scene kept growing. Mm, of course. It's and, continuing to grow. And it continues to grow. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really as amazing. An as an educator, is piano performance what you're teaching? Well, I teach, I, I teach, I only teach jazz. Okay. So I'm in the jazz studies program at JMU. And um, so, yeah, I certainly, I teach jazz piano private students, but I also coach other jazz musicians okay. who play other instruments. You know, we'll just work on the music, not mm -hmm. so much, you know, I can't teach someone how to play the trumpet mm -hmm. better. Um, so I work with uh, brass players um, and, uh, you know, I've, I've worked with singers mm -hmm. quite a bit too, uh, just because I've done that a lot in my professional life. Mm -hmm. So I'm, as a coach, not, right. again, not as a voice teacher. Um, and then I, you know, I teach jazz improvisation classes. I teach uh, jazz keyboard skills, you know, functional piano. So a lot of different things. And I coach a, a small jazz group combo. That ability to coach throughout different medium in jazz music certainly has something to do with your skill as a performer, but I imagine your skill as a composer also helps you influence the way you're coaching these students. Yeah, well, um, you know, we only occasionally will we actually get into composition in the lessons. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, just trying to, yes, as a composer, you have to kind of have some insight into how music is put together. 
and that's the sort of thing you need to be able to communicate to a student mm -hmm. so that they're not just sort of flailing away at it. <laughs> they see, oh, this is part A fits with part B, and mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they get a good overview of the structure as well as the content. That's important to learn, otherwise you're just mimicking what someone's already done. Yeah. I think it's important to, to learn those things, but then find a way to evolve it, right? To advance yeah. the art form. Right. Yeah, and I think a lot of what's important about that is to just create an environment mm. with a student where they can learn. Because, I mean, the older I get, the more I realize, wow, one hour, you know, with a private lesson, mm -hmm. one hour a week, that's mm -hmm. nothing. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get some things up, but you just kind of have to help them set a direction and then inspire them to do the work that they need to do on their own, which is going to be most of it. Right. You know, we're really just a guide. Discipline. There's discipline in and, all education. Yeah, right. For teaching sure. teaching good practices of like discipline, right, and how to practice. It has it's no longer a secret, I hope to folks of you at home, that we're not live. So I've already yeah. heard set two and I know you're getting ready to to deliver to us something we haven't yet had on this broadcast and that's chance music. What is, can, can you talk a little bit well, about that for us? That, well, that was just a little um, kind of play on words on my part. You know, because chance music, it's, it's, um, it's kind of creating the music by random mm -hmm. uh, processes, mm -hmm. like, you know, drawing numbers and all that uh, out of a hat kind of thing. And then that each number representing some, maybe some kind of phrase or rhythm or what have you. And... And since two of our selections uh, in this performance, who happen to actually be right next to each other mm -hmm. in the set list, have the word chance in them, that's why I'm, you know, I'm an incorrigible punner. So I, <laughs> I couldn't resist that. You know, what it's, uh, I don't stand a ghost of a chance with you. Yeah, that was the that. one. And then, and then the other is uh, called N chance, which. I don't think it's a real word. I think the composer, <laughs> Joanne Burkeen, just made up that word, which it sounds like it should be a word. But Shakespeare <laughs> did it all the time. Oh, uh, yeah. Thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Making stuff up. Yeah. What can you tell me about? We've learned a little about Neil, but what about the other gentleman on stage yeah. with you tonight? Well, Emre Kartari, our, our drummer, wonderful drummer, who was a student here at VCU when I taught here. And uh, we stayed in touch over the years. Um, he is originally from Turkey, oh, and um, but you know, grew up after he came came to this country at by age eleven, I think, mm. and grew up in the Washington, D.C. area. So he's, you know, one hundred percent Turkish and one hundred percent American. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. So, and um, but he he eventually went back to Turkey and got me to come over there and do some things as well as some other of his teachers from here at VCU and in when he was a graduate student at NYU in mm. New York. And, and as a result, I ended up going over there maybe four or five times and for different musical projects mm -hmm. with Emre. And just recently, we got him to join the faculty at JMU oh, wow. also in the Jazz Studies program. So he's our, even though he lives here in Richmond, he is our jazz drum set professor. Oh, wow. It's got to be a blessing. Yeah, it is. I mean, and it's great to get a chance to work with him regularly now. And, um, and then our saxophonist, David Pope, I mean, he's, mm. you know, one of my very closest colleagues at JMU. Mm. Um, amazing musician, both classical saxophone as well as jazz saxophone. Mm. So he is the saxophone teacher at Ought to be. Earned, yeah. just earned that. Everything rolled into one. And uh, yeah. yeah, and we've just always hit it off, you know, uh, you know, kind of coming from a similar place with the music and, and spiritually, uh, you know, in, in reference to the music. Um, and so he's been at JMU for uh, something like 20 years. Mm -hmm. um, great person, great, great teacher, really a wonderful teacher. Um, and pretty renowned among national and international saxophone circles. You, you'll hear a little bit of his, what we call multiphonic 
mm -hmm. technique where he's able to play two notes at once. Mm -hmm. That is also something I don't think we've yet had on this. Yeah. We've had some circular breathing. I'll bet. I don't think we've had that. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't had that multi yeah. And this is something that John Coltrane was experimenting with a little bit. And you can hear it on several of his, his mm -hmm. recordings. So, but Dave has taken it the next step beyond that. Um, For sure. So yeah, I was, when, when the opportunity came up to, to do this performance, he was the first person I thought of that I wanted to join me. We've, we've worked a lot as a duo mm -hmm. uh, in various venues, played at the Kennedy Center mm -hmm. as a duo. Um, so it's nice when we have a chance to expand it a bit and, and include bass and drums. You know, you both sure have enjoyed a great career in performing in places like the Kennedy Center. I've been there too. I'll bet. And now you're here, it couldn't be any place better. But I'm no. interested in, you've, um, you've been in, involved with quite a few recording projects. Uh, what are some of the great moments there? Wow, well, um, gee, I'm, there's enough that I'll have to <laughs> pick carefully here. Um, well, I, you know, I guess I should say doing some that were my projects. The, you know, there's two that I did with a great guitarist named Adam Larrabee, who lives okay. in Charlottesville, as a duo. Um, and then I did a trio. My most recent recording is, is a, a trio um, with a, a drummer that lives here in Richmond, um, but he's in some circles he's better known as a keyboard player because he's the hmm. keyboard player with Butcher Brown. Yeah, you know we still haven't had Butcher Brown. We've had a few <laughs> of the members of Butcher Brown. Yeah, I'm yeah. sure. Like uh, Devon has probably played here. I think it Devon may have been Harris. Devon. Yeah, so he's the drummer on that record and a great bass player originally from Russia who taught for years with me at VCU, Victor Devoskin. So those those are some of my, you know probably most noteworthy recordings because they were my projects but I've, I've recorded with a great singer named Stephanie Nikazian who's yeah she was on the show ah, I, 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 I would not doubt that mm -hmm. yeah I mean and if if she wasn't I would highly recommend that you get her here <laughs> she was on some time ago but yeah she yeah was here. beautiful yeah. voice yeah Stephanie's great um, and um, yeah oh and one last another duo recording with my uh, another saxophone brother of mine, um, musical brother, a gentleman up in New England named Fred Haas, who okay. I met when I taught briefly at Middlebury College okay. back in the 90s. And uh, he and I connected up there. He, he'd been living in that area for some time and wonderful saxophonist. So we did a duo recording. So those are probably my top three or four recordings that I've done. We are just about to come to the end of our conversation, but before we do, how did you keep your chops up during a time in world history where we weren't really getting together <laughs> to do anything? Well, I tell you, I, it got, I, it, there became so much more to do just to teach in mm -hmm. my, my full-time teaching job at JMU that I really didn't have much time to practice unless I absolutely, absolutely had to, and then I would borrow hours from sleep to do that mm -hmm. for like, a virtual performance like this, which I only had two or three during that year's time. Right. Um, so I didn't really get to practice to keep it, my chops up, but what little playing I did was for my students mm -hmm. in demonstrating things uh, all online, at least all of last year. We're back fully in person now at, at JMU, so so yeah, so, but I, I do feel like I'm still getting them back. <laughs> I think we all do. Yeah, I, I, me included. There you go. I've had to sing a couple, handful of times on this show, and every time I realize, that's not form, I've got to figure <laughs> that out. And I've just booked myself to be, to sing professionally again. I am not ready, so I'm really working on getting my chops. There you go, but that's, that's what you got to do, right? Mm -hmm. You got to get a gig. That'll make you practice and get ready, whether you, whether you want to or not. <laughs> Absolutely. I, I, don't know why I said yes, but I did. <laughs> You'll be glad. <laughs> I, I'm already glad. You're working on it. You're right. I'll take that encouragement all yeah. the way home with me. Well, Bob, I've appreciated the performance. I've really enjoyed the conversation. I'm looking forward to learning more about yourself as a musician and as you play it. I hope I get to hear you live some other time or I just get to join you in the audience. I'll look forward to that. Well, thank you very much. If you're ready for it, we are ready for the second set. Let's go. Let's right. do it.
So uh, that last song, I Don't Stand a Ghost of a Chance with You, featured our, our saxophonist David Pope, the master of multiphonics, playing more than one note at once. You might have noticed that. But more importantly, just a, an amazingly beautiful song. Um, and that song and the one prior to that that we played to open the second set, Morning, it's called, both associated with the great tenor saxophonist Youssef Latif, who Dave had the great fortune to have as a mentor. And so we wanted to include his composition, Morning, as well as this beautiful ballad, A Ghost of a Chance, that we uh, are familiar with his recording of. And so, uh, and that's our very minimal nod to the time of year that features Halloween as a holiday. But that's the only song we could get in that had ghost in the title. Figured that would just have to do. So now we're going to go to um, another song with chance in it. So we're playing chance music here on the second set. Um, it's written by a, uh, a wonderful pianist and composer by the name of Joanne Brackeen. And um, she's been around a long time. She's a National Endowment for the Arts jazz master. Uh, I think she's already now, by now she's in her 80s and she's teaching at the Berklee School of Music, the great jazz school up in Boston. Still, still making music and still uh, keeping the music alive by passing it on to younger generations. This is a tune of hers that's in 3-4 time, although it starts out in 4-4 time in case you're paying that close of an attention to it. Um, and it's called And Chance, And Chance.
it's really been a pleasure playing for you. And we hate to stop, but we're going to make, make that a little easier by combining two tunes into one for our last selection. Thelonious Monk, uh, as many jazz musicians have done, wrote this composition that we're going to play second in this medley of two, uh, based on the chord changes to a popular song from um, his youth called Just You, Just Me. And then he kind of did a play on words when he came up with the title for it. Just You, Just Me. In other words, just us. And then he kind of changed that to the word justice. And then that made him think of the word evidence. So that's the title, evidence, but it's based on Just You, Just Me. So Dave and I will play the melody to Just You, Just Me before we launch into our improvisational explorations and excursions. And uh, then we'll come back to the melody of evidence before some more improvisational excursions. So thanks again for listening uh, to the Bob Hallahan Quartet with David Pope, saxophones, M. Ray Cartari, drums, and Neil Perrine, bass. This is Just You, Just Me, and Evidence.
Will Bob Hallahan Quartet at all. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for coming back and showing off more than just a little bit for us tonight and helping us spread the news around to all those on the other end of that lens that there is excellent talent in this great commonwealth of Virginia. A few months ago, somebody said they don't like it when we call ourselves local musicians because we're just musicians on par with anyone anywhere else in the world. B.J. Brown and the Richmond Jazz Society, thank you for knowing musicians like these and sending them to us. To remember Tommy Productions, thank you for capturing these stories. Earlier, somebody said, Chris Buford was going to be the most important man in the band, <laughs> running sound. I think you weren't wrong. Thank you, Chris, for making everyone sound good week after week. To Dominion Energy, thank you for sponsoring events like these so we can put a little cash in their pockets. To those of you at home, thank you yet again for loving with us. Thank you for listening to us, and thank you ever much for learning from us. In Richmond, Virginia, at the Virginia Museum of Fine Arts from the Leslie Cheek Theater stage. This has been our virtual Dominion Energy Jazz Cafe. I'm Robert Bernard. Good night. <laughs>